going to take on day three of Advent of Code 2022. I'm going to try to do this in the R programming language. Um, like usual, I'm just kind of a average computer programmer and trying to make these videos aimed at a novice audience. I'm going to try to solve both puzzles here in day three in about an hour, which at first sounds like a lot of time. But if I remember correctly, the Saturday puzzles tend to be more difficult. So let's see what we have in store for us. Day three, rucksack reorganization. One elf has the important job of loading all the rucksacks with supplies for the jungle journey. Um, the puzzles are designed to be as accessible or reasonably accessible to an international audience. So the reason why rucksacks has a link because um, a lot of people, myself included, might not be all that familiar with that word. <laughs> so you could click that link and it would take you to a Wikipedia page explaining what a rucksack is. Unfortunately, that elf didn't quite follow the packing instruction, so a few items now need to be rearranged. Each rucksack has two large compartments. All items of a given type are meant to go into exactly one of the two compartments. The elf that did the packing failed to follow this rule for exactly one item type per rucksack. The elves have made a list of all the items currently in each rucksack, which will be our puzzle input, but they need your help finding the errors. Every item type is identified by a single lowercase or uppercase letter. So lowercase a and uppercase a refer to different types of items. The list of items for each rucksack is given as characters all on a single line. A given rucksack always has the same number of items in each of its two compartments. So the first half of the characters represents items in the first compartment, while well, the second half of the characters represent items in the second compartment. For example, Suppose you have the following list of contents from the six rucksacks. One, two, three, four, five, six. The first rucksack contains the items, which means that the first compartment contains this half of the items, while the second compartment contains this half of the items. The only item type that appears in both compartments is lowercase p. Similar for the second and third rucksacks, and fourth, fifth, and sixth. To help prioritize the rearrangement, every item type can be converted to a priority. Lowercase item types A through Z have priorities 1 through 26. Uppercase item types A through Z have priorities 27 to 52. Thinking ahead, I'm probably going to hand code this because I don't actually know the shortcut in R. And also, if people are um, in the audience are beginners, they probably want to see the actual logic here. So there's going to be a moment in the video where I'm going to do a very tedious calculation for this part here. In the above example, the priority type item that appears in both compartments in each rucksack is 16 for the letter P, 38 for capital L, 42 for capital P, and so forth. Uh, Advent to code puzzles need one answer. So the designers of each puzzle have that in mind. In this case, we're going to add up those so-called priority numbers. In, in our example, that sum is 157. To summarize, we're going to find the item type that appears in both compartments of each rucksack. What is the sum of the priorities of those item types? Okay. Just trying to think of it. Well, I go ahead and load up my R Studio. Already was an error. 
in R the command is read lines. I don't know why I thought it was something else. And in the bottom left hand corner, I have the puzzle input. Like usual, what we're doing is load, loading the data. And I have a hunch I'm going to be using the tidyverse at some point. In my data frame, I'm going to want a, a column, but I need to know how many rows I need. So I'm going to want a column for rucksack one contents. And for now, I'm just going to make a blank space. Rucksack two contents. Make a blank space. We are going to need the uh, item to rearrange. That's going to be a uh, a letter, an upper or lowercase letter. And then finally, we're going to have a priority code. To be honest, at this moment, I'm not sure if I could solve the puzzle. But at least I allocated the space for it. So we're going to need a function. I'm going to compute priority. It's going to take in a letter. You know what? In second thought, instead of like typing 52 lines of code here, I want to briefly do a quick Google search on the side and see if I could uh, find something a little more um, easier to understand, palatable. So what I'm looking at is this Stack Overflow page. Uh, thank you to this person, Emo, for answering this question. The way R works is that the lowercase letters um, is has a pre-built array in R um, letters, all in lowercase, and somewhere in uppercase uh, as well. So we're going to look at that. So we're going to return um, this priority. We're going to initialize as zero. And what I'm going to do is um, ask if it is a lowercase letter. I could show you is on the lower left hand side what le letters looks like. It's, it's this here. So I think what I could do, I don't even think I need this one to 26.
So if the letter matches some one of the lowercase letters, we're going to take that. And similarly for an uppercase letter. And then return. In the R programming language, the last line of code, if it's a value that gets returned, I, I like to leave a comment there for people who don't program in R all the time. So what I should do is um, test this function. Also, while I'm here, I should have made a new code block. So we're going to compute the priority of the letter A. This should return to number one. Okay. I have an error in my code. Let's uh, look at the bottom left-hand corner, see what happened here. What I'm trying to do is send the letter A into this letter B, and so forth. But if there is no match, it actually turns a missing value. I, I assume it turned zero. So what I need to do instead is in R, check for a missing value here instead of comparing it to zero. Check my pro number of parentheses, the scourge of us all, isn't it? And let's run a few tests. Oh, M should return 13 if I remember correctly. A should return. 27 and n sh should return 31 I believe at the moment I do have an error in my code but I just want to make sure this is sort of working so far okay so I got the 1 and the 13 the uppercase a is uh, returning 1 but it should be returning 27 and the capital N is returning 14, it should be 20, uh, 31, and I forgot to add the 26 here for the uppercase letters. And now my code should be working fine. Let me just test Z while I'm here just to make sure I got that. Okay. So now, for the hard part, we need to parse the strings. So here in the bottom left, we need to grab these strings. Hopefully, each string has an even number of characters. We're going to split that in half. And then, and then place them in the data frame. So we're going to load the data in the data frame. This inventory is the puzzle input. Um, that is, we're going to grab the strings one at a time.
we're going to need the number of characters in, in that string. Now, in many programming languages, you have a floor function if you want to round down. And in R, the other one's called ceiling if you want to round up. So what I'm doing is for the first rucksack, at the row, we are grabbing this inventory from one through the floor of the halfway point. Actually, I might not even need that at all. We're just grabbing the halfway point. Then for the other one, we're going from the halfway point, add one, we're gonna be extra cautious with the parentheses here, and go to the end of the row. Something happened here. Let me double check some of my programming. So this inventory is this string here, or you know, the last string of the example. And says that there are 24 numbers here. Should be a two while I'm at it. This inventory going through the halfway point. Ooh. See what happened was I tried to grab the first 12 items and R um, went to reach for 12 items but in a different way. Um, let's go ahead and think about this for a bit. I like using the string R package, so I'm going to just find that function real quick. On a Google search. So instead, what I want to do is we're going to, from the string R package, we're going to string sub this inventory from one to n over two, like that. Similarly, we'll grab these locations here. at my data frame. Now I have each rucksack's contents split in half. So now, <laughs> I think I already made this joke already, but now for the difficult part. The idea is now you have to go through each letter, find the one that's in common, and we're going to place that in the third column. So I think what I'm going to do is do a nested for loop here from one through n over two. That is, um, so I just want to think about how I want to explain this. That is, when we go through a string like this here in the bottom left hand corner, we're going to check each string one at a time, one letter at a time, and actually 
what we're going to do is grab one letter at a time from the first string and then just see if it's in the second string. What we're supposed to be doing, let me try to find the example again. Is in the last in this last string here, the only item that appears in both is lowercase s. So we're supposed to find that as we go across, once we get to lowercase s, so I'll find lowercase s in here. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick Google search in the string r package. I believe it's string detect. What I'm thinking of is, as we go across, we could think of a column of numbers, kind of like in a matrix, but I don't think that's really necessary here. And partly just for my own sanity, I want to keep the thought processes at a relatively easy to understand level. So this rucksack one is now this. And this rucksack two is now that. So what I'm looking for is if we detect string first then the pattern okay if in this rucksack 2 we detect this rucksack 1 letter then in the next column item to rearrange We save that letter, and for just a tiny bit of um, optimization. Oh, as we're going down through this string here in the bottom left, if we find the S in both strings, then we don't have to search for the rest of, through the rest of the string. So we're gonna break out of that. Just double check some of my data here. This rucksack two is a string. This rucksack's one letter. Is not grabbing the letter. So I need to if we get the letter I need I'm going to do another string sum this 
so if in rucksack two we encounter the letter we're going to examine like that so now let me compare what we have with the example in the first example the common letter is lowercase p in the second um, line of the example the common letter is capital L uh, then capital P, lowercase v, lowercase t, and lowercase s. Now we need to take each of those letters and give them their numerical value, numerical code. And I think I'll just do that here inside the nested 40. We're going to find priority code. We had a helper function called compute priority of the, in this case, letter to examine. It's not supposed to be 19 each time. not supposed to be 19 each time. Maybe I just put this in the wrong place. Maybe I could just make a new column this way, the D prior way. Before I get to that, um, maybe there's a, a simpler way to do this. Why don't I just shove this in here? Right. Oh, <laughs> I didn't put the row number here. That's what it was. Yeah, okay. There we go. Lowercase p is 16, capital L is 38, etc. And then finally, let's see if this all works out. The sum of the priority codes is. Got 157 and check in the example is 157. Excellent. Now, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my input file, run my code again, get an answer, paste that in, and we got it. Woo! Only took us half an hour. <laughs> I'm going to give myself a Dr. Pepper break. All right, folks. 
brace yourself for part two. As you finish identifying the misplaced items, the elves come to you with another issue. For safety, the elves are divided into groups of three. Each elf carries a badge that identifies their group. For efficiency, within each group of three elves, a badge is the only item type carried by all the elves. That is, if a group's badge is item type B, then all the three elves will have item type B somewhere in their rucksack. And at most, two of the elves will be carrying any other item type. The problem is someone forgot to put this year's updated authenticity sticker on their badges. All the badges need, need to be pulled out of the rucksacks so the new authenticity stickers can be attached. Additionally, nobody wrote down which item type corresponds to each group's badges. Of course not. The only way to tell which item type is the right one is by finding the one item type that is common between all three L's in each group. Every set of three lines in your list corresponds to a single group, but each group can have a different badge item type. So in the example, the first group is this, second group is this. In the first group, the only item that appears in all three rucksacks is lowercase r. This must be their badges. Similarly, in the second group, their badge must be capital Z. Prior priorities for these items are, must still be found to organize the sticker attachment efforts. 18 for lowercase r, 70 for capital Z. Find the item type that corresponds to the badges of each 3L group, what is the sum of the priorities of those item types? Might not be too bad, but if you're watching this, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this takes me to get the second half an hour. For some reason, I forgot my habit of copy and pasting the instructions to my code. I'm going to do that now. In the example, we're going to grab these three and then these three. Okay. Or in other words, we're going to grab the lines three at a time. afraid of is I'm probably going to have to repeat a lot of code here. So let's see. We're going to look at the input again. I'm going to look at three rucksacks now. What are these called? These are called the stickers, right? Badge sticker. And 
we only need to go n over 3. I'm going to call this d of 2 because I'm so clever. Make sure that's rucksack 3. And now d of 2 looks like this. Okay, so so I need to somehow go through my puzzle input for the first three, put them in rucksack one, two, and three respectively. and then do the same for the next group of three. So for row in one through and over three, It's always just uh, indexing. So we're going to look for rucksack one contents in this row. And we're going to place in the puzzle input. I think it's three times row number minus one. Plus one. I think it's like that. And then for two and three, we put a two and three here. That is, long story short, we're, we're doing this in groups of three. And I want, in a for loop, I'm, I'm mentally I'm used to starting from one in the R programming language. But in this indexing, I, I need to start from zero. So now, no. Oops, I meant to put that in D of two. And now df2 has this here. Okay, so next the idea is to go through, search for the, the similar items again, that is the same letters, but it has to be true in all three. Let me refresh my memory. How did I do that just like five minutes ago? I've got to be careful because um, the strings themselves now might have different amounts of letters. We have three rucksacks.
and n1 will be the number of characters in box set one. So now what I'm going to do is similarly go through with this character. and see if it's in box act two. So if it's in box act two, now I need a new like tier of it all. I'm gonna grab the number of characters in box act two. the letter to examine. We'll be now searching through rucksack three. And if that's found also in the third rucksack, we need to do all this again. We need to place the letter that we're examining into what I'm calling the badge sticker. And then we're also going to deal with the priority code. Uh, I'm missing a parenthesis. Isn't that just great? So let me check that with the example. In the first rucksack, we had lowercase r. In the second, oh, it's the first group of L's, we have lowercase r. We found that. In the second group of L's, we have capital Z, which gets. Uh, 18 of 52, and the sum is 70. So let's go ahead and print that out. The sum of the badge stickers priorities is sum of that column in DF2, which now gets, uh-oh, where did I put that? Which gets the 70, like the example says. So now I switch this over to the my puzzle input. Hopefully it doesn't take too long for my unoptimal code to run. Type that in. And I got it. Whew, about 15 minutes for the second part. I have some awkward pauses in my video, so I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And otherwise, uh, thanks for joining along, and I'll see you tomorrow.